turn to your neighbor and say, you got some more to do. If you are here, you got some more to do. I have been blessed by the multiple pastors who have preached today and from the different denominational backgrounds that they come from. I was excited to see, I was listening at the organ. I am a musician myself. I looked over at the organ and saw one of my light-skinned brothers. I'm a little bit lighter than you that was on the organ, and I didn't know that they played like we played. And I was equally excited to see how God can use a visually uh, challenged person to go to the organ and minister and then go up to the choir stand and direct. And he knew where the bass was. He knew where the tenors were. He knew where the altos were and the soprano. You can't tell me that with your deficits and your conditions that you still can't praise God. Listen, I'm going to ask you to do something for me today because I feel like I'm at home when I come to Pleasant Green. I want you to help me because uh, we need to do something uh, to show the devil that we are together in 2014. Uh, I'm going to need you people who are comfortable on the side seats and over here to move to the center section because I am a believer if all you have is two teeth, they look better together. I'm asking y'all to be obedient and move. That's, I know you're comfortable, but see, that's the problem. We got to get out of a comfortable church and get into an uncomfortable church. It looks better. Pleasant Green is a media-driven church. They're on television. They're on Facebook, YouTube, Ustream. Whatever you is, they own it. And the audience looks better. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. The audience looks better when they pan the audience and you got people in the audience rather than scattered all over the building. I'm excited today. My friend is here, Dr. Lamb, a preacher's preacher. We're grateful for him to be with us today. And of course, all the great people of El Shaddai, all the great members of Pleasant Green, all the great persons who have came to share in this preaching bowl this year, 2014. My mama is in the house. Y'all got to see my mama. They think she's my wife when we out to dinner. Stand up, mama. So you sure got a pretty wife. My mama is 78 years old looking good like that. Grateful for my sister, who's my assistant in ministry, my pastoral assistant, Mr. A. Patricia Jackson. Come on, stand up so they can see you. I'm excited today to talk to you about a subject that's important to all of us, that all of us have been challenged with this once or twice in our lives. I'm here to let you know the Lord sent me on a mission today to let you know to get yourself ready in 2014. Because promotion does not come without commotion. You're on your way somewhere, but you got to go through something to get to something. So be not dismayed. Understand that you're going to go through some situations in 2014, but it's going to take you to a place you've never been before. Now, I want to say something before I get into this preach because it doesn't take me long because I'm like, uh, some people are like a jet plane and they have a long runway to take off. I'm like a helicopter. I can do, bam, I'm gone. 
So I try to slow myself down just a little bit. And I want to say something about one of the finest gentlemen in gospel preaching and pastoring in the nation. A man that has the tenacity and the skill and the anointing and the gifting and the fellowship and the friendship to bring multiple preachers from different denominational positions. One of the finest preachers in the world, my good friend, the Dr. Jarvis Collier. See, believe it or not, everybody can't do this. God has assignments for certain people to do certain things. And Dr. Collier is an incredible erudite. He is a preacher. He is a preacher's preacher. He is an author. He is somebody to be patterned after. We are grateful that God sent him all the way from the sunny shores of California and brought him to the cold shores of Kansas City, Kansas. And we enjoy him and we love him. We are radio mates on KPRT. I listen to him before I come on. I'm on at 9 a.m. He's on at 8.30 a.m. And I listen to him and I tell people, that was my friend you were listening to. That was the Dr. Jarvis Collier. You know, some people tell me, why do you talk about other pastors and other people on your radio? That's your time. See, if we will learn how to celebrate each other rather than to tolerate each other, we can go to major places in life. So it does nothing against me to celebrate someone else who is doing a great work and don't come down. We love you, Jarvis. Come on, give him another round of applause. Quickly. Quickly, I want you to go to Genesis. I'm going to do this as expeditiously as I possibly can so I can be appreciated standing and sitting. If people get with me, I've told Pleasant Green this before, when they get with me, Dr. Lamb, the sermon is around 35 minutes. If they sit and look, the message is about two hours and 35 minutes. Tell somebody, I'm going to get with him. I'm going to get with him today. Amen. Genesis 37, starting at the third verse. If you get that, somebody say amen. When you get it, get on your feet with me so we can honor the Lord's word. We're going to read three through five, and then we're going to go from there. Now begin at three. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all. Is that where you are? Read with me loudly, class. Now Israel loved Joseph how? Uh-huh. Come on. Four. Saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Five. Excuse me. I know this is not proper, but please forgive me. It's an emergency call. They escaped from where? Who? I am preaching, but I have to. There's been an escape, uh, church, and I want you to get yourself ready. There's been an escape from the federal penitentiary in hell. And what, 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 what type of person escaped? It is a dream killer on the loose. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dream killer. Dream killer. Yeah! 
tell somebody there's a dream killer on the loose. You may be seated. A dream killer is on the loose. And he broke out, they said he broke out about 20 minutes ago. And he was headed this way. So it was, it was, it was only right of me, Jarvis, to, to let the people know that a dream killer is on the loose. I want you to know that every dream that you have, a lot of us have had our New Year's resolutions. And we have decided that we're going to do this this year. And we're going to do that this year. And we're going to continue doing this. We're going to stop that. I'm going to lose weight this year. I'm going to let some weights go this year. I'm not only going to lose some weight, I'm going to let some weights go. You did run well, but who hindered you uh, that you would not hear the truth? So there are some, there's a dream killer on the loose. And, and it started back because this dream killer operates in a spiritual perspective. He has been then and he is now. And so therefore, back even in Joseph's time, he was there. And a lot of times, you don't understand, a lot of your hating comes from your family. Here it is that Joseph was the young son, a coat of many colors. And when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, the Bible says they hated him. It didn't say they disliked him. It said they hated him. (laughs) That's a strong word. I don't know about you. But when somebody say, I hate something, it's a strong word word to say when you hate something. And it's even stronger to say you hate somebody that you came out of the same womb with. His brothers, all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told it to his brethren. And the Bible says they hated him yet the more. What I'm here to share with you today, Pleasant Green and all that are here today, I want you to understand that people don't hate you because you Jarvis Collier. They don't hate you because you Desmond Lamb. They don't hate me because I'm Marvin Jackson. They don't hate you because you Keith Newton. They hate you because you got a dream. They're hating the dream. Anybody that dares to go beyond what other people do, they will hate on you. (laughs) Anybody that dares to do greater things than your family have done, they will hate on you. Anybody that wants to excel in ministry, they will hate on you. Anybody that wants to do God's will, they will Because most people are looking for people who are content with their current situation. Years come and years go and they never change their status in their life. You become the same boring person that you were five years ago and it gets even more boring as the years go by. But you dare a person that says this year I'm going to do this. This year I'm going to do that. And people will hate on you because they thought they stopped you last year. They stopped they stopped you two years ago. They thought they stopped you four years ago. You still got a dream. What's wrong with you? Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it to his brethren and they hated him yet the more. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. This is how folk I hate on you. Watch this. Lo, my sheaves arose and all stood upright and behold, your sheaves stood around about and made obeisance to my sheaves and ate and his brethren said to him, shalt thou indeed reign over us or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him Yet the more for his dream and his word. 
What we fail to understand in today's society is somebody got to lead. Somebody got to be in charge. Somebody got to be the overseer. Anything got two heads is a freak. It's messed up. Get a household and you got two folk trying to lead it. You're going to have a problem because you got two different opinions. That's why God operates in the government. He operates in order. Our families are sometimes the hardest places to develop camaraderie. Holiday seasons, I noticed at my church, I don't know about you pastors, but a lot of times my members come to me and tell me, I say, what you doing for the holiday? Oh, I'm not going to do anything. Me and my sisters don't even talk. Me and my brothers, we don't care if we see each other no time during the year. Oh, no, I can't get along with my mama because she married another man. All kind of isms and schisms, all kind of things that keep us from going forward. But I want you to understand that there is a dream killer on the loose. And his job is to steal, kill, and to destroy. He comes in our homes first. And if that spirit permeates in our household, it will move to the church house. Dream killers. Crushers, haters, are you a dream killer? Do you have the spirit of a dream killer? Does every time the pastor have a new vision or an idea or a suggestion, are you the one that always comes up with some type of reason why we cannot do it? Are you the one that tells the choir we don't need new uniforms? Are you the one that tells the usher board these uniforms we got is fine? Are you the one that says we don't need no new paint on the church? Are you the one that always got a problem with progress? You better be careful that you're not inheriting the spirit of a dream killer. Look at ultimately what the enemy wants to do is to make you think that the things you desire, the goals you have, the aspirations, the visions you see, he wants you to think it's an impossible dream. He said there's a song called To Dream the Impossible Dream. Dream killers, I want you to understand that they're on the loose and they're trying to destroy you in January. They don't want you to get to February. They don't want you to make it to March. They don't want you to make it to April. Because if you make it there, you might finish the rest of the year. But he wants to kill you off in January. Everything you said you was going to do, he said, I'm going to kill it. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to recognize his spirit. I'm starting to recognize him in the choir. I recognize him. In the usher board, I recognize him on the pew. Because we got some killers in the pew. Oftentimes our churches are not emptied from the pulpit. Oftentimes our churches are not challenged from the preacher. Oftentimes our churches are not going through droughts and ups and downs and upheavals based upon what happens up here. Oftentimes it's some crazy Dream killer in the pew that's trying to fort its idea upon weak-minded people. Pastor, what do you mean weak-minded people? They go after people who just got in. Ain't settled in yet. Don't really know the order of the church have not caught a hold to the pastor's vision. Don't know exactly where the church is really going. And they sit next to them. They get close to them. They want to take them and their family to lunch. Some kind of way the pastor finds out they've been spending time at the house. And before you know it, your attendance starts to drop off. We look around the attendance ministry, the pastor and the first lady looking, what happened to Sister Wilson? And then the pastor goes through a challenge in his own spirit. Did I do something? Did I say something? 
Did I not provide enough attention? Did I not mention their name? What, 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 what did I do that caused them possibly not to be here? But I'm here to let you know, Dr. Jarvis, it's not you, Dr. Lamb. It's a dream killer in the pew. said, God, what can we do about it? We've got to have people in the pew that recognize adversarial attacks. Sometimes the man of God is trying to preach a word and trying to share a word and trying to impact the people with the word of God to lift the entire congregation to a new level of living. But I need some Holy Ghost filled folk. Yes, I said it in the Baptist church. We need some Holy Ghost filled folk right in the church. I know some of y'all don't believe in the Holy Ghost, but that's just what it is. Not the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Ghost. And I'm here to let you know if you got some folk in the pew with the Holy Ghost, they can pick up on that mess. See, it shocks some of y'all when the praise team from Pleasant Green started shouting. Some of y'all had a culture shock. Said, this is Pleasant Green. What they call themselves doing? I found out that God can come in any place he's welcome. I found out it don't matter what the name is on the marquee. If the people where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty to raise your hands, raise it to do your dance, raise it to praise him, rather to sing your song. Whatever you want to do to praise him, praise the Lord. Dream killers. The reason why he comes against the praise in the house. Because he can live in a non-praising environment. That's why we got so many devils in our churches because we refuse to pray. It's a conducive environment for dream killers to live. I'll tell you a story about Jesus. Dr. Lamb, he went home one day and took the disciples with him. And I'm paraphrasing here, Jarvis. I know you're a literary man and paraphrasing here. But I see Peter and all the rest of them sitting down at the table of greens and cornbread. I see them eating macaroni and cheese and the candied sweet potatoes. I see them slicing turkey and, and fried golden brown chicken and enjoying themselves. And all of a sudden, as Jesus matriculates through the house, Different family members said, can you help us fix this couch? Can you help us paint that back wall? Do you mind the sheetrock is coming off over here? Can you fix the sheetrock? Some people left you where you started. They have not understood what God has done in your life. So they still remember you as you were when they met you. Jesus goes in there and he looks around and he detects that there's a different kind of spirit in this house. He goes in the kitchen. He says, listen, I'm sorry. We're going to have to go. I do apologize. We thank you for the hospitality and we're going to have to go. Jesus, don't leave. He goes into the dining room and tells his boys, get your bags. I know you ain't had food like this in a long time, but get your to-go bag. We are getting ready to get out of here. And so they get outside and they're frustrated and they're upset and they're angry and they're wondering why, Jesus, why are you making us leave? Such a comfortable environment. Jesus says to them, I can't work no miracles here. Or oh, read the text. He tells them the reason why we're leaving because I can't work any miracles here. What he was essentially saying is the atmosphere is not conducive for me to do what I'm called to do. And when you're in a church, when you're in a place where you cannot do what you're called to do, you're in the wrong house. Oh, yeah. Jesus himself, the son of the living God, 
says, I've got to get out of here. It would look like Jesus could perform it anyway. But he gives them a message there to let them know that you can't do what you're called to do in an inappropriate environment. That's why you got to check your friends in 2014. You got to check your neighbors in 2014. You can't let everybody come in your house with whiskey and wine. Can't let everybody come in with weed and reefer. Oh, it's all right. They not saved. Go ahead and let them do it. Oh, I'm talking to somebody right now. I don't want no smoke in my ashtray. That's for my change. Am I talking to anybody here? I don't want that. I pay too much money at the cleaners to come out smelling like a pal mal. We got to learn how to tell folk who we are. And that you can't operate in my house like that. I love you, but you got to keep your fifth outside. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. Here he is, Joseph. And we all know the story. It's strange to me that these boys, Sister Pat, put a hit out on their own brother. They said, what we'll do is we'll dig a hole. Oh, my God. And we will get him caught in the hole. And we will tell our father that some wild beast, oh, am I, am I on the story? That, 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 that some wild beast came and devoured him. Do you know there's some people trying to put you in a hole? Can I speak to your money right quick? Sometimes God told me, he says, Pastor, you've got to stop lending, loaning money to some members. It got quiet because all y'all members watch. I said, God, well, what do you mean? I try to help people where I can. He said, you're not helping them by loaning. He said, you've got to teach them how to fish. When you teach them how to fish, they'll eat every day. If you buy them a fish from Fish City, you feed them for a day. But if you teach them to fish, you feed them every day. Then God had to spank my hand, Dr. Lamb. He said, what you're doing is you're taking my good money that you've labored for, that the people of God have blessed you with. And you're taking that money and you're placing it in non-fertile ground. I speak to you today that some of you have been given God's good money and putting it in non-fertile ground. If it was fertile, it would have produced something. But if you keep going back to the plant and nothing has ever grown out of the ground, you know there's no fertile, nothing going on there. There's nothing happening in that ground. You've got to speak to that ground. Here is Joseph being caught up by his brothers who he loved. See, most of the time, the reason why we share our dreams with people. We share them with people we love. We're not out all in the street trying to tell somebody what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do. Dr. Doom, we share our dreams with people we love. And what we're looking for in return is support. Not always money. I'm not always needing a check from you, but I am needing some kind of support from you. I need you to say, you can do it. Sometimes the pastor knows your financial condition, but he needs to hear you say, Pastor, we can do it. Here is Joseph in the pit. Oh my God. He's in the pit. His brother set a trap. The dream killer thought he had him. 
And I'm here to say for some of you all, the dream killer thought he had some of y'all. 13 was probably a rough year for some of y'all. But you made it. Tell somebody in this room, I made it. <laughs> I know the dream killer thought he was going to kill you off. It thought things were going to be all done and said for. But you got to turn to him and say, but I made it. I'm here through the trials, through the tribulations, through the hospitals, through the financial, through the romance, through the family, through the husband, through the wife. I made it. Watch this. Watch this. It shocked me that this boy had a special gift on him. And the Lord started speaking to my heart. Mother Jackson, he says, when God has anointed you for a purpose, it ain't nothing the devil can do with it. He can try. He can try. But he cannot win. He can try, but he will not succeed. Oh, it's not saying that you're not going to be buffeted every now and then. You're not going to go through some trials, some tribulations. But you understand something that you're coming out of that thing, and you're coming out as pure gold. And I'm here to let you know that here is Joseph in the pit. God has one of his brothers. I do believe that's the story. I think it was the oldest brother that goes back and gets him out. And watch this. Some people were traveling, and they sell him. They sold him. I'm here to let you know, in 2014, there are going to be some people trying to sell you out. I don't care what you are doing and what you're trying to do. There's going to be some people sometime right in the pew trying to sell you out. A lot of our problems do not come from outside of the walls. A lot of our problems come right on the inside. It's an implosion instead of an explosion. Here is this boy and they sell him. He goes to somebody's house as a servant. God Almighty, it don't matter what the devil puts you in. You coming up like pure gold either way. He's down there in the pit, then he gets sold to Potiphar's house. Somebody know the story in here. He goes to Potiphar's house, and the Bible starts to record that everything he touched... Everything he set his hand to, am I telling the truth here? It prospered in his hand. See, you got to understand that your hand is different from anybody else's hand. You got to understand it don't matter what other folks' hand is. You got to know God got something in your hand. Watch this, Lamb. A basketball. I mean, a good spouting basketball. I'm talking about court ready NBA basketball runs about $73.52 in my hand is worth $72.53 but in LeBron James hand is worth $22 million a year it just depends on whose hand you in I want to tell somebody you better put your hands in the master's hand. Whatever you're dealing with in 2014, put it in the master's hand. Put your children in the master's hand. Put your wife in your master's hand. Put your church. Put it all in his hand. Finally, after the devil had thought he had Joseph messed up, Joseph starts to prosper everything in Potiphar's house. His money went up. His cattle went up. Oxen, goats went up. Everything, his bank account went up. The NASTEC wanted to talk to him. Everything was going well. Be wary when stuff start going good. You have to stay closer to God than ever before when things start going good. Because see, you can get the misperspective. 
and people around you can get a dismissed perspective. Joseph, finally here, Joseph blesses the house. And somebody starts to look at the boy. She was already in the house. That's why men have to be careful. Because dream killers plant little flowers in the flock. Oh, I know I'm telling the truth. And here he is, Potiphar's wife. And Potiphar's wife, Dr. Lamb, I can't say, Jarvis, that I blame her. Because what woman don't get excited when she see a man operating in authority? What woman is not turned on? We should see a man operating his God-given talents. What woman don't smile? We should see everything around her that was just basic. Now it comes to elegance. She starts to eye Joseph. Oh, it's in the Bible. I ain't messing this up. If you read the story, it's there. She started to eye Joseph. And she got excited behind him. And she told him something. This was one of the times, Doc, right. that the woman asked the man. Oh, it's in the Bible. I hope, I hope I'm not. I, think, I want you to understand everything I'm telling you is right there in the Word. She tells him, Joseph. Things are going so well. And I'm feeling so good. I ain't felt this good in a long time. My husband is off the war. He's taking care of the army. But when I saw you command the servants around this house and saw things happen under your leadership, it excited me. She says to Joseph, read the Bible, you'll get it. Lie with me. She went straight to the punch. She didn't waste no time because she didn't know when Potiphar was coming home. She said, lie with me right now. Let's don't waste no time. Let's go on. The integrity of a man. You've got to be able to stand when it's been through. I'm not talking about what I'm thinking about. I'm talking about what I know about. You've got to stand when it's offered to you. That's not to say that Joseph didn't want it. Y'all mind me preaching plain to you? Didn't mean he didn't want to be with her. But he honored his position with Potiphar. He said, I cannot do this thing to Potiphar, who has made me the greatest in his house under him. You got to watch as the pastor graduates you in the church. It gives you different levels of authority. You've got to watch because the killer is coming. He wants to test you on every level that he can. And so here, Joseph passed the test. But he ran. The Bible said he fleed. Did anybody read the story? Did you get the story, Dr. Newton? It said he fled. He ran. He skedaddled. He got to moving. Got to stepping. Because sometimes you got to run. Not because you're so holy, but you might mess up and make a mistake. You got to know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. Know when to walk away. Know when to run. 
You better count your money. Joseph got out of there. And he ran. But the devil still working. She grabbed his clothes. You ain't getting away from me, boy. Mm -mm. Come back here. And you know he had to be running fast and hard to tear the clothes. So she decides she gets angry and she tells a lie to her husband. You know, folk are still lying in church. Sometimes they're trying to say men are hitting on them. I know I'm telling the truth, Doc. Sometimes they say, he hit on me. After you hit on him about eight times. <laughs> he, he runs. And the wife tells Potiphar, he raped. He raped me. I believe Potiphar knew he had a dream killer at home. You can't tell a woman too much about her husband that she don't already know. You can't tell a husband about his wife that he don't already know. He leaves. I'm closing here. He leaves and he tells, she tells her husband he raped me. So Potiphar, with his authority and his position with his wife, as to this slave, and she said, that Hebrew you brought in here. It's almost like saying, that nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> are, y'all, are y'all with me today? She said, that Hebrew you brought in here. Rape me. She left. Potiphar threw him in prison. The ending of the story, most of us know it, is that he prospered in dreams. That's right. So you can't do nothing with God's folk. It don't matter what you do to them, don't matter what you say about them, they're going to rise like cream. Comes and he Comes friends with the jailer. Finds favor with the jailer. And after a while they said, whatever Joseph said to do in jail, let it be done. Then somebody was looking for somebody that could do what Joseph did. He couldn't find it amongst nobody on his team. But somebody remembered a little boy down in jail. And Pharaoh said, you got anybody who can interpret the dream? And the man said, there's a boy down in the jail. His name is Joseph. If you bring him up here, everything will be all right. If you get Joseph up here, things are going to turn around. If you get Joseph up here, families going to come together. If you get Joseph up here. Joseph was necessary. He healed a lot of situations. And the killer was silenced. You silence the dream killer by pursuing the dream. I don't care what the devil brings. You got to know for God I live and for God I die. If God gave me the vision for it, he'll give me provision to do it. And anybody who I just said, if God gave you the vision for it, he'll give you the provision for it. The dream killer is on the loose. But you can stop him. And you can stop him now.
Give God a hand of praise. Lord. Come on, let's thank.